Europe has changed. Europe has become an attractive place for entrepreneurs. To put this statement in context, let me tell you what it used to look like. Hi, I'm Björn Tremery. I'm responsible for ICT Venture Capital and Business Angels at EIF. Today, EIF talks. Growing apples in Europe and what's next for venture capital. They say Europeans have no word for entrepreneur. But I've noticed a change recently. Old, unused buildings across Europe suddenly filling up with young, dynamic people working on laptops. Men with beards, women looking inspired. These co-working spaces are in Berlin, Stockholm, Warsaw, Barcelona, London, Paris. What's going on here? Where did Europe's technology hubs come from? Well, let me tell you, Europe has changed. Europe has become an attractive place for entrepreneurs. To put this statement in context, let me tell you what it used to look like. In the past, the options for a young graduate were as follows. You get an MBA, you go compete with thousands of others for a job in a top investment bank, an engineering firm, a consultancy shop, and then you work there for the rest of your life. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that path. It's just not the breeding ground for entrepreneurs. What does it look like today? Nowadays, those MBA graduates are not any longer interested only in big banking jobs. They also compete for technology jobs. Some 20% of the MBA class graduates of the London Business School in recent years went into technology jobs, compared to only 12% in 2012. We have seen a talent shift from old education, from old career paths to technology. Entrepreneurship has really become a fully recognized and valuable career path. Success really breeds success. What has changed? The entrepreneurial ecosystem in Europe has changed. In the past, as a founder for your startup you needed financing, you went to a bank. They said, you don't have any assets I can lend against. Go away. End of your dreams, end of your plans. Now, fortunately enough, in Europe, in the last 20 years, we have built an ecosystem that can now rival with the US and with China. How did this happen? Well, some 20 years ago, the European Investment Fund started making cornerstone investments in venture capital funds. This worked like a magnet. This cornerstone investment allowed private investors to invest. These fundings allowed funds to be raised. Thanks to these funds, entrepreneurs and founders and startups got financed. On the basis of preliminary success they had, more private investment flocked in, which in turn allowed to have more funds being raised. Nowadays in Europe, if you are a successful entrepreneur with a good idea, you will get funding. Venture capital funds, business angels, crowdfunding platforms, high net worth individuals, family offices, they are all competing for you, your startup and your ideas. But it took time. For a long time in Europe, we've been working off of paper valuations, but not any longer. In 2018, Spotify listed on the stock market at a valuation of $25 billion. Eidzettel, a Swedish payment system startup, got swallowed up by PayPal for over $2 billion. European investors are not any longer satisfied with a 2 or 3x return on their investment. They want another Spotify. They want another Eidzettel. Now in Europe, a good company that's growing can raise 100 million euros. And with that money on the bank account, you can go compete globally with the best of the best. So you're a successful founder, you just raised 100 million euros. What are you going to do with it? 
How are you going to offer something beyond your core product offering? How are you going to hire a thousand employees? What's to stop you from plateauing? What's to stop your competition from coming in and doing better? Growth and growth capital, more importantly. Growth capital is the next big step in European venture capital. In 2018, in the US, Apple became the first ever company globally to reach a trillion dollars in valuation. A trillion dollars. So we need to grow our own apples in Europe. US and European econ economies are pretty much similar in size, yet Europe only has a fraction of the risk financing available for financing the later stages and the growth stages of our winners. That's where we need to act. Yes, 15 years ago, it may have been quite a suicide mission to become an entrepreneur in Europe. Not anymore. We have our role models, our exits. 2018 was the first year of big liquidity in Europe. It came fast. But we cannot stop. We cannot become complacent. We cannot rest on our laurels. We need to grow that apple orchard.